All right, everyone, Robert Francis O'Rourke Beto, uh, as is shorthand, I suppose, the, the ethnic one for more votes, uh, has been talking to Hillary Clinton on the phone, apparently. Now, of course, uh, he's going to be retooling and rebranding and sort of relaunching his campaign in a little while prior to the first debate with the Democrats, and it's going to be... It's going to be better than, better than sex. Oh my God, I can't wait to see the first Democratic debate and see some of those weird, zany shit that's going to get said. Now, of course, the mainline networks, they're going to handle them with kid gloves, at least for the first few. They're just going to let the candidates sort of explain themselves first, I think. And then they're going to try to get them to destroy one another. And what Beto is trying to do is he's trying to be the one that bends and kisses ring to the Clintons, gets the favor, and, and ends up either being the nominee, which is the primary goal, or secondary to that, uh, at least get that Clinton favor in there. Uh, they can get a position like, you know, maybe they can be in the cabinet or something if, under whoever wins. Now, Biden is still very likely to become the nominee. Despite the Me Too stuff, his gibbering incoherence at times, and all of the other pro the the obvious age problem and everything, he's still leading by a mile. He's still 10 to 15 points ahead of Sanders, who has stalled out somewhere in the high teens, the low 20s, depending on the poll is lower. The Clintons, though, they don't want a Sanders. Um, I, I don't think that they have trust in him being viable. I happen to agree with the Clintonian neoliberals on something, which is astonishing. I think Biden, it would technically be viable if it weren't for baggage and his age. Uh, he would have been a, a strong candidate if he had been running the last time around, maybe. He would have done okay. I think he, he would have posed a challenge. Clinton, not so much. Bernie, definitely not. Uh, I think the Clintons wanted a Kamala. But Kamala Harris has been stalled out. I don't think, that because of her tough on crime and and weird past with regards to the Matupak smoking weed thing, I think she has some baggage that's going to hold her down <laughs> below the 20% threshold long enough for her not to win any of the first four states. She goes limping into Super Tuesday, gets knocked out. I think that's what the Clintons are worried about, but that was their golden girl. And originally, it looked like she was going to be at least a strong third third place, you know, you know, up, uh, basically rounding out the top tier candidate. She's been sort of replaced by Beto, in many respects, and by Warren. Now Clinton, I think, gets along with Warren, but again, I think viability is the main issue. Democrats right now, when polled on what's important to them during the election, it's not it's not my guns. It's not my gay rights, it's not my climate change, it's not Iran, it's not the economy, it's not jobs. The only thing that they care about seems to be electability. I'm looking at the field, I am telling you, they are grossly miscalculated. The problem is that they all have a different idea of who's electable. People who are further left say, well, the neoliberals can't do it because they're tainted by corporate money. Biden's, you know, a weak candidate, you need Bernie Sanders. That's what the Bernie bros would say. People who take up that line, but they don't like the fact that Bernie Sanders is a white old male, they want Kamala Harris, or the feminists, they want Elizabeth Warren. They think that she can take it to Trump because she's more fiery. She'd be more on the attack. Beto has his own little fan base, his charismatic fan base. They think that his wild gesticulation and his weird comments about the border and the fact that he skateboards sometimes is a positive for some reason. And then you have sort of the the so-called center-left, the business dem coalition with some of the neoliberals backing Biden. Each one of these groups thinks their candidate is the most viable. What does that mean? Only one of them is going to be the nominee, and one of them might be the running mate. Probably would be. Like, if Biden gets nominated, he'll probably pick one of the other more viable candidates from the top three or four below him to be his running mate. Or he'll choose somebody that's popular within the Democratic Party that didn't run. Uh, that would be another move. He could pull a Trump and, and, you know, basically have his own Mike Pence. It'd be funny because I'm wondering who Biden would choose to be his sidekick. It'd be really funny if it were like Michelle Obama or something. <laughs> Weirder things have happened in politics. I I'm not saying that. I think that right now the most likely would be Harris. Choose Harris. So younger uh, matters when your main candidate will be 77 on election day. Um, geriatric. So you've got someone who's, who's several decades younger, um, an ethnic minority. That matters. Female, that would definitely, and, and then a lot of uh, female voters would get whipped into a frenzy saying, well, Biden will probably die in office within a year or two because he's so fucking old. We need, yeah, we need to back him because we'll have our first female president. And she won't have been elected. She'll have been put in that position because she was a running mate. Just think about how fucking weird that's going to look in the history books, people. By the way, that would be an excellent selling line for Donald Trump. Hey, I, I want a female president too. I want her to get elected. 
You know, unlike Hillary, unlike Kamala, who's again would be if I were Biden, I would look at her as the number one possibility as a running mate. Wouldn't be Sanders. Then the, the line of succession on that one, whoever's the Speaker of the House is going to end up in that position. We're turning into the fucking Roman Empire. Jesus Christ. But when Beto is talking to Clinton, you know, shifty things are afoot. Nobody wants her advice on campaigning. Yeah, I'm sure that what they talked about was him wanting her advice on how to deal with Trump. A loser who didn't visit, visit Wisconsin, who canceled a bunch of shit in North Carolina, and thus threw the election for the Democrats despite winning the popular vote because of high turnout in California and New York. Yes, she he, he really wants her advice, her acumen on campaigning. No, he doesn't. He's a, yo a youth candidate from a totally different generation, and he's trying to do the social media thing. It's not working very well, but he has his own way of doing things. It's totally anti clinton No, I think that he called her up and said, hey, you know, I could use a favor. I, I need you on my side if I'm, you know, I'm doing well in the first or second debate. I'm rising up maybe. I want you to endorse me. I, I want your support. I want your money as well. I'll, I'll give you a kickback. What do you want? Chelsea Clinton might run for the Senate. Maybe I'll bankroll her. Maybe I'll, I'll endorse her. I'll, I'll stump around a couple times if I become president. Or even if I'm just the nominee, you know, still a powerful position. Having been a presidential nominee is a powerful position. You're still going to be making millions giving speeches even if you're a total loser. Just look at Mitt Romney. <laughs> or Hillary Clinton. <laughs> or, or any of these other. Or Biden soon, uh, assuming that he survives to election day and doesn't have a massive stroke because he's just so fucking old. The dude's falling apart. He's probably going to be the Democratic nominee. I, I hope that Biden's the nominee because it'll be perfect symbolism. The Democratic Party is outdated and incoherent, incapable of uttering a coherent platform. That's what they've become. Beto O'Rourke is very similar, except younger. He is sort of like a Joe Biden when you really think about it, by the way. I mean, he, he makes mistakes, he does weird shit, uh, he just doesn't have a Me Too problem. He had that one problem where didn't he insult his wife or something like that? And he had to apologize very visibly about it, and, you know, weird shit. So it's a weird political season. I see Trump coasting to re-election at this rate, in all honesty. Unless something now, unless something changes before roughly Super Tuesday for the Democrats. We need to wait until that and then autopsy who's left in the field, who's still viable, you know, if anyone, who's going to be the nominee. We'll know after Super Tuesday pretty much who it will be. It's probably going to be Joe Biden, but he could get knocked out. It could be Bernie Sanders manages to pull it off. It would, it would, in order for Sanders to do it, though, he would need to take Iowa, probably. Because if Biden takes Iowa, then right off the bat, he might bump Sanders down just slightly in New Hampshire because the Democrats are so obsessed with just winning the election regardless of who the nominee is. He could lose New Hampshire. That would knock Sanders on his ass. He would lose. He would not be able to become the nominee. Sanders' path to victory requires New Hampshire. Trust me. Because it's going to be the talk of the town for days if he loses there. Because it's right next to his, his representing state of Vermont. Not his home state. His home state is New York. He's from Brooklyn. Which is why he doesn't sound like a Vermonter. Because he was raised in Brooklyn. But a lot of people for some reason think he was born and bred in the Green Mountains. No, he was born and bred in a city in a fucking borough with twice as many people as Vermont has. A little bit different now, isn't it? At least he represents us decently on gun rights. You know, he's not exactly an anti-gunner. Mostly. He still likes some gun control, which I think is just as bad as a lot of gun control. Any of it's unacceptable. It's crazy. Uh, but Beto talking to the Clintons, yes, something is afoot. He's bending knee and asking for a favor in the mafioso Clinton sense. It's basically what it's about. That's about all. Peace out.